Thank you. Uh, this is very much work in progress. Uh, this is a, a paper I'm working on right now. Uh, it's part of the, the research uh, project uh, Everyday Devices, which also includes Tobias Pontara at this department, Ulrik Wolgsten at Örebro and Toivo Berlin at Stockholm. And uh, uh, this presentation, as uh, indicated on the screen, it has to do with uh, the genre system of early phonography in Sweden, uh, uh, roughly 1900 to 1935. What do I listen to when I listen to my gramophone? Uh, the, the basic research questions here uh, have to do with uh, uh, how audio recordings uh, <coughs> released on phonograms were categorized during this per period of early phonography. Uh, uh, Quite a lot ha has been written about uh, uh, the repertoire uh, in, in the evolving gramophone industry, uh, but mainly I would argue from the point of view of, of uh, post facto categorization of uh, what was uh, released on gramophone. What I'm interested in here is how was at the time this repertoire categorized? What were the sort of genre labels put on various sorts of music in uh, both in, in, in the marketing from the uh, gramophone industry and in the reception uh, of consumers. And it related to this, what no notions existed about the adequate use of different categories of phonograms? What were they supposed to be used for? And last, uh, which I won't go very much into uh, right now, uh, how the discourses were formed which regulated ideas of what kind of audio material was appropriate for phonogram listening and how these should be used in a domestic environment. This last question uh, is uh, quite close to what Ulrich Wolgsten uh, in our research project has been working on. Uh, has <coughs> written a, 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 paper, a forthcoming uh, article on uh, attitudes to the gramophone in general and the role of the gramophone and its technology in uh, uh, home styling and, and uh, decoration of the, of the home, how to fit that equipment into uh, the domestic environment. Uh, the source material is um, contemporary gramophone industry material, uh, <coughs> primarily uh, record catalogues, but also information from the industry, from, from gramophone companies to retailers, which is uh, quite an interesting uh, piece of material. Uh, all this is, uh, what is left of this is preserved at the Royal Library in Stockholm. Uh, Press material, daily newspapers, and uh, thankfully uh, the digitized uh, newspaper material at the Royal Library is now at last available uh, here at Gothenburg University Library, so it's been quite useful. Uh, journals and magazines uh, of various kinds, uh, not digitized. Uh, and uh, <coughs> I should add already at this stage that uh, often it's the case in this kind of historical study, uh, the production side is much better documented. It's much easier to, to uh, access uh, material from the gramophone industry and from, from uh, retailers uh, uh, wishing to sell the product. Uh, the consumption side, <coughs> the, the, the view of consumers is not very le much less documented. So often one has to sort of uh, uh, scan quite a lot of material from newspapers and such to, to, to uh, sort of uh, infer uh, patterns of use, patterns of, of, of thinking about uh, the phenomenon in question. 
<coughs> very short uh, about popular music and genre theory. Uh, there are uh, some recent studies of, of uh, popular music genre system <coughs> systems, uh, uh, which mainly, I would argue, seem to take pre-existing media systems as uh, a sort of self-evident given point of departure. We have media systems and how do genre systems relate to these media systems. Uh, in the period I'm studying here, this is not the case. These media systems are in the process of construction. So the gramophone industry is sort of evolving from scratch or nearly scratch. In this period also other media, broadcasting and sound film are important in these connections. So uh, this is a, a period where media systems and genre systems are in a state of flux, as it were. <coughs> Uh, Pekka Gronov and Björn Englund uh, in an, uh, a, a very comprehensive article about early gramophone repertoire in Scandinavia claimed that the companies had to find out by trial and error what types of music would be attractive to consumers. Uh, and uh, I would uh, partly agree and partly disagree with, with Gronov and Englund. Uh, with what was happening in this period, uh, of course, uh, some attempts were successful and some were less successful. It could be described it as errors, but what the gramophone industry tried to do was try to, to uh, <coughs> define categories which uh, in some way would uh, uh, be beneficial to, to, uh, to record sales uh, based on some previous knowledge and some guesswork. And it's the details of this process I'm interested in here. Uh, this is a sort of, of, of summary of, of the genre systems of uh, uh, phonograph cylinders in, in Sweden. Uh, there was quite a, a, a large market uh, uh, for phonograph cylinders in the early 1900s, uh, roughly from 1900 to 1905. And this is a, uh, a summary of existing uh, catalogues from, from that period. Uh, a central uh, uh, type of, of uh, material was what is described as cop couplets and songs, uh, review couplets, as that is a particular type of popular song. Uh, and that's, uh, as I said, the central category. Uh, uh, one catalog uses the, the nice expression extra fine songs. <coughs> and uh, analyzing this, it's, it's quite clear that uh, uh, these songs are extra fine both in terms of repertoire, uh, opera, arias, for example, and performers, professional opera singers singing these operas, making these songs extra fine. Orchestral music, uh, which in the, the period of, of early acoustic recording, of course, was mainly wind orchestras, uh, primarily military bands, various kinds of instrumental solos, uh, the category Christmas dances and peasant polskas appears quite early. Uh, I'll return to that later. And then there's a huge uh, category uh, often uh, uh, labeled as mis miscellaneous, uh, diverse, such as, and these are quotes, laughing songs, negro songs, yodel songs, uh, sort of novelty items with uh, uh, Featuring a material uh, which presumably would be uh, unfamiliar but interesting for a general Swedish public. A quite large, large uh, category is uh, what is called Schildrande Musikstück and depicting pieces of music, which is some uh, uh, various kinds of sound effect tableaus involving music, but other sounds sort of. Uh, yeah. Uh, auditive uh, sketches 
uh, depicting various kinds of situations. And at last, uh, humorous songs and humorous re recitation. <coughs> yeah. Humorous items uh, uh, being quite a, lo a large category in this connection. Uh, the gramophone uh, in Sweden quite rapidly uh, 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 took over from the phonograph. Uh, the Scandinavian gramophone, uh, Scandinavian gramophone company was established in 1903. It was a market leader in the Swedish market throughout the period studied here. And uh, judging from from uh, both from, from the material at the Royal Library and from other sources, uh, the phonograph, the cylinder phonograph, was quite rapidly uh, pushed out of the market by the, by the gramophone. Uh, the oldest rec record catalogue from Scandinavian gramophone preserved at the Royal Library is from 1905. And uh, now I'll start from that and I'll sketch out some of the central categories I found so far. Uh, as I said, this is work in progress. Uh, there are <coughs> there's some empirical material uh, left to, to, to analyze. It's uh, striking right from the start that uh, one central category or rather one central epithet uh, attached to various kinds of music is artistic in Swedish, konstnärlig. Uh, and uh, right from the start, it, that's, that's a very important uh, uh, line of argument in, in marketing of, of gramophone music. Uh, in the first <coughs> Scandinavian gramophone catalogue, uh, there are categories such as internationella konstnärer and in internationella konstnärinnor, that is, <laughs> international male and female artists. On the other hand, <coughs> quite early there are uh, also examples of uh, traditional music marketed by reference to what I would describe as authenticity criteria. <coughs> Here is a quote from a catalogue in 1908. Peasant polskas and folk dances, bundepolskor och folkdanser, uh, Uh, music, uh, these pieces of music are an outstanding specialty, previously not existing here on record. Uh, they distinguish themselves by the particular freshness in the performance of original and extraordinarily nice melodies, hitherto not heard in this country. Uh, it's not clear from the catalogue exactly what this was about or where, from where this piece, these pieces of music uh, originated, but uh, uh, some sort of exotic, unfamiliar, but uh, exciting music. There's also, <coughs> this is not from a catalogue, but from a information leaflet to retailers where uh, the gramophone company asks the retailers to uh, submit suggestions for local repertoire to be recorded. Uh, Folk songs, humorous songs, and stories, tune dances, etc., which may enjoy a huge and legitimate popularity in a certain limited part of the country without being known here in Stockholm. Uh, and that's one indication that uh, the kind of phonograph culture I'm describing here is, is uh, a quite uh, big city focused, uh, not least the capital of Stockholm. <coughs> and there's a suspicion underlying this that uh, this particular uh, uh, sort of a big city environment is not uh, entirely representative of the tastes of, of the Swedish public in general. As exemplified by uh, the category of accordion music, at least since 1909, this is a separate category in, in the catalogues. Yeah. Uh, by all uh, indications, it seems that accordion music is very popular uh, throughout the 1910s and 1920s, which is problematic since uh, there's a 
conflict between huge popularity and low autistic status. And interestingly, there are uh, uh, instances of uh, grouping the accordion and the gramophone together in, in uh, uh, music aesthetical uh, uh, discussions. Uh, both the accordion and the gramophone were mechanical instruments. On the other hand, uh, the oldest uh, specification I found of sales figures in Swedish context it has to do with Carl uh, Labo, accordion virtuoso and a very successful gramophone artist. Uh, in 1918 it was claimed in an advertisement that his Livet in Finskogen had been sold in 32,000 copies. <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, the accordion was uh, 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 marketed in terms of artistic qualities. Uh, I had to skip on uh, from that. Uh, another category is modern dance music, which is uh, in a way the opposite to, to the accordion repertoire. And dance music is, of course, a central category. Uh, the interesting thing here is if one compares the record catalogues to newspaper material, there's a, a, a cyclical process which can be discerned uh, involving international dance styles, uh, dance schools, which are quite important for teaching people how to dance, and recorded music. Uh, and here's a, a list of uh, the the, <coughs> the years uh, stated here of the first uh, occurrences I have come across in, in newspaper material. So uh, there's a su succession of new dance styles uh, appearing, which uh, are commented on in newspapers. Then the uh, dance schools uh, start uh, uh, ad advertising uh, lessons in this and then uh, recorded music geared towards these dancers are appear. Uh, it can be note, noted here that both jazz in 1919 and blues in 1923 uh, are presented as a new dance style, a new style of, 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 of this, uh, social dancing. <coughs> I noticed I'm running out of time. Yeah, so I'll have to uh, skip rather hastily through this. Uh, the, kind, the category of Schlager is of course important uh, as the sort of uh, generic term for popular hit, vocal hit song, the mediatized popular song. Uh, and the word is not used very often by the gramophone industry, but retailers and, and and uh, reviews in papers use the, the expression must more often. Christmas music is a, 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 a very particular category. Fortunately, I don't have time to say very much about this right now. Uh, uh, but I'll try to go deeper into that in the forthcoming article. Uh, the record review, uh, which is, uh, I've looked for record reviews and as far as I can find, the first I've come across so far is from 1923. That is a published assessment of a, a, a named individual record. Uh, and that I think is, is, is quite uh, important in this, this connections. Uh, from the late uh, from the second half of the 1920s, uh, there's an increased marketing of great classical works. And then we have sound film, which I won't have much, much time to say uh, uh, anything about now. And uh, from the mid-1920s onwards, there's also a growing diversification of gramophone record genres. Uh, gramophone records used for, for a, a, a variety of uses, but still, of course, music, recorded music, is in quantitative terms the most significant category. 
So, uh, tentative conclusion, not very uh, substantially uh, uh, based in this presentation, but by the early 1930s we have a fairly well established and differ differentiated Schnorr system compared to the situation 30 years e earlier, catering for a number of a growing number of subcategories. But uh, in Sweden, a relatively late appearance of the phenomena such as record reviews uh, or record collectors, uh, also something that appears in the 1920s. And uh, uh, since uh, the early 1910s, a large number of class, uh, classified ads in the newspapers for uh, second-hand records, uh, which do not specify the titles. Uh, it seems to indicate to me that the individual record as a specific cultural object is not something which appears <coughs> in Sweden until uh, the 1920s. Uh, and uh, also something which I haven't been able to argue very extensively here, uh, it may be questioned where, whereas <coughs> whether using the gramophone necessarily means listening in the sense of focused auditory attention. Also something which seems to appear after 1920. So, uh, the subtitle of... No, the, the main title of this presentation, uh, I conclude, is somewhat misleading and should it perhaps have been termed... It, it's quite clumsy. <laughs> what are the perceptual slash cognitive slash physical activities which are associated with my using the gramophone would have been a more uh, appropriate title. Thank you.